friends and enemies welcome back to happy for now it's me Isabel here to talk about all of the books I read for Smutathon. so I finished all the prompts I did not read nine books though the readathon lasted about it was eight days yeah it was eight days I was gonna be like about eight days no it was exactly eight days so that was delightful and I'm really happy I participated I always love this readathon it's one of my favorites uh, I love the bingo board and I'm just really happy with myself for how much I managed to read this go round. So the first book for enemies to lovers I read The Earl I Ruined by Scarlett Peckham. This book centers in I believe it's more Victorian. I am bad at historical eras so never ever ask me that question because I will be like I don't know it was historical. I think it was Victorian though there was like powdered wigs and stuff so I read that. The Earl I Ruin centers around Constance and Julian. Julian is a Earl and he is having some issues financially and lots of other fun things going on. He's like trying to get a bill passed through the House of Parliament and Constance is secretly a gossip rag writer. Like she writes stuff for tabloids, like she circulates amongst her friends these like kind of spicy rumors including about this house on Charlotte Street that is known for aristocrats going to to do things. It's a sex club. Uh, so it's delightful. She writes a poem about him though and she basically destroys his bill and his likelihood of it going through uh, the parliament and getting passed. So she comes to Julian and is like let's let's pretend to get married. So it not only is like he kind of, she hates him it's a misunderstanding enemies to lovers. It's not quite like full-blown enemies to lovers but I do feel like they kind of become enemies throughout this and then they come back together in a way that makes them not enemies anymore obviously because it's a happily ending. <laughs> but I thought this was handled really well and it's so well written like I can't express to you how well written I feel like Scarlett Peckham's books are and I'm really really excited for her first like traditionally published book by Avon to come out this year because I'm really curious to see what happens when she's in that sort of format. I adore this book, an easy four star read, like no question, finish it four stars for the writing alone. D freaking lifeful, highly recommend. Next we have my 2019 release which was Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. This is Hades, Hercules, and Meg and this centers in the Wicked Villain series is book two and we get to see a lot more of this world, a lot more development and growth. It's over the top, it's banana pants. Like, I didn't need the story. I mostly just wanted to watch them all bone, personally. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at. Um, but I just didn't, I think it's well written and it's enjoyable and the plot parts were whatever for me. But I just liked the snippets we got of the other people that work at the sex club that Hades runs. So that was enjoyable. Some like annoying bits were like some misunderstandings and things that I thought really if they would have just spoken to each other would have been handled a little better but otherwise no real issue. I gave that a 3.5 on my spreadsheet so I rounded up to a 4 on Goodreads. Then I read my LGBTQIA plus book and that was American Dreamer by Adriana Herrera. This is a male male romance which is super not something I normally read. I felt comfortable going into this after reading Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana because I knew she handled that well. I figured she would handle this well and I was not wrong and a lot of my friends really really like this series so I was trusting them <laughs> to be good arbiters of taste pretty much at the end of the day and not make me like regret my choice. Uh, it's not that I don't like male male romance. I do. I really do. I prefer own voices for my male male romances because I really do think that it can get a little fetishy and weird when non-LGBTQ people uh, write these books personally. Um, so that's that's my take on it. Obviously like if that's what you read that's fine. I just personally am not I just don't like those books usually so I've kind of like removed them and I only read like very specific <laughs> ones but I loved this this is about Nesto who runs a food truck in New York City area not really New York City he's like but the Bronx I think it was the Bronx I might be wrong hopefully I got the right burb <sighs> the burrow not burb hopefully I got the right burrow there but he runs a food truck and he brings it up to Ithaca New York and it's this really delicious island 
com combo food truck. Um, it's a lot of like Dominican and Haitian and like those islands. Um, and I cannot remember what they're called. The food truck's named after it. Foods. And it made me so hungry. And I still have not gone out to get my plantains after reading this book and go get myself some delicious like Latin street food because that's what I need right now and it's happening this weekend but this book like blew me out of the water Nesto was a very like he was he's almost self-centered and over focused on his business and Jude comes in and kind of helps him like find that release of like someone to be with and how to live beyond his like business the villain in that book it felt very accurate and real in a interesting way as well uh, it is basically a nice white lady who is like anti-immigration and just real shitty to them and they're to the food truck and trying to like throw them under the bus with the city so i do recommend you check out any content warnings on this one because of that like i'm okay reading it but like i could see that being harmful to others Otherwise, I do recommend this book. I think it was great. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And I think a 4 star on Goodreads. Really, really enjoyed my time with it. Next, we have new to you author and recommended to you. So I doubled up on this one because I finally was like, you know what? I really need to read this author. And that author is Dylan Allen. My bestie loves her. I've seen Steph talk about her. Like, I just, I keep needing to go in and like try her books and I put it off for some reason and I don't know why because I listened to Thicker Than Water by Dylan Allen for this and fell in love with her writing. I thought the story was beautiful, it was like well written, it is, it was just so fun. So it is about an undocumented immigrant in California and she writes a book that becomes a bestseller and this movie producer he wants to make it into a movie and he's like oh she's really cute. So obviously they have a little romance happening, but a lot of it centers around the harm her family has suffered as immigrants and how, how to deal with that. And the um, Lucia is just such an incredible character and I really, really enjoyed reading about her. And then Reese is just equally as amazing. I thought, I thought it was well done. Um, I can't speak to the rep, obviously in this but I didn't see any reviews that like really talked about it beyond like people being mad it was part of the plot but they didn't look they didn't say it was bad because like it was bad rep they were just mad that there was an immigrant story and a romance and I personally don't get that but um I really loved this it was such a fast read too like I got through this book so so quick and it was so freaking good. I loved it so much. Highly recommend four star read again. Next we have my forbidden romance and my out of my comfort zone romance. I doubled up on as well. We have Preacher Man by Jessica Kane. Um, what do I say about this book? So I think my review on Goodreads literally just says oral exorcism because that's all you need to know. It's like 60 pages. If you are intrigued, you just, want to see what's up with this book that's been talked about a good bit go read preacher man um i give it two stars i don't think it was good i think the premise and the setup for this book is so banana pants over the top that i like couldn't get into it the same way i can get into like aliens it's very weird very weird book y'all uh, I don't really want to talk about it a bunch because like I said it's only like 60 pages so check it out if you're curious. <laughs> Next I read Piece of Work by Stacey Hart for my workplace romance. So this book was not bad. Um, I got it signed at Book Bonanza. Stacey was super sweet in person so I kind of just ended up buying a bunch of books. <laughs> I didn't hate this and I didn't love it. I'm gonna keep my book. Like I didn't like it, dislike it so much that I'm like, I'm getting rid of this. So this centers around Ren who gets an internship at the, uh, the Met, right? Isn't that the court? Okay. So I think she got an internship at the Met or whatever, one of the big museums in New York City. And she kind of is like, not very confident. She's a very tall Asian American woman. So she gets a lot of comments on her height, 
which sounds awful. <laughs> uh, and I just, I struggled. I don't know how that rep is in here, right? Um, and that, I, at first I was very nervous when I discovered that part of it. But I kept reading and I was really excited with how a lot of this book unfolded. I think there was a great discussion about the power of like how you dress yourself and how like a good lipstick can like make you feel like amazing and things like that which you know some people would say like that's so shallow but honestly I agree because when I put on a cute outfit and go out on a date or to an interview or wherever to work I feel great and there's nothing wrong with that like there's something to be said about like your clothes making you feel comfortable and confident versus like you know, feeling like beat down or whatever. Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense, y'all. Anyway, she has a great transformation moment in this around that and some people were upset in the reviews. I noticed that it was like a, now you're beautiful, but I think she was beautiful all along. She just really learned how to like embrace her inner beauty. My big issue with this is she's an intern and he is like the director of this department. And that is a line that is, I think is a hard line to cross nowadays and a hard line to read. This book is obviously a little bit older, but um, I mean, not obviously, this book is a little bit older, so I do understand, and this is like the second cover of it. Overall, this is a three-star read for me. I enjoyed it, I had fun. I am excited to read the next books in this series because I think that her friends actually sounded more fun to me than this character did. But written and court were fun overall. I didn't hate it, didn't love it. It was okay. Next, we have Wreck to You. So Brie and Steph have talked about The Headmaster by Tiffany Reese. I realized it was on Audible Escape and I dove in because it's short. Uh, this book, wow. Okay, so one, I love Reese's writing style overall, so I knew that I would enjoy this for the most part. So Gwen stumbles upon this job in this like remote town in Appalachia-ish area, it seems. And she shows up and she ends up teaching these boys English, but something's not what it seems. Like, it's so not what it seems that I can't tell you anything else about this book without spoiling the whole plot. All I can say is if the, if the, the, what you've heard about it so far or the summary sounds interesting, check it out. I gave this a four stars, a four star rating. Um, I thought it was really neat and I really liked the reveal at the end and I loved that I knew nothing so I'm gonna tell you nothing about this last but not least we have Kirsten Ashley's wildest dreams which I read for out of your comfort or no for fake relationships so this is parallel universe and twins kind of so you have a twin in a parallel universe and you can pay money to like get transported to that universe and that's what happens here they swap places because the girl in current earth is dying uh, Finn, Finny, is wants to be see her parents again who have died on that planet. And the other Finny wants to be a lesbian, uh, which is great. And I would love to have her read her adventures in regular Earth because she's running from an arranged marriage that the other one does not know about. So she shows up <laughs> in this new world and is like literally like running out the door to be married to this guy that she's never met, Dracor. And there's a dragon on the cover. So I had to read it to see if there were dragons in this book. I was mad because it took until like 85% for anything dragon to show up. It's just fine. I just felt, I don't know, it just lacked this like Kirsten Ashley spark that I like. And that was the main reason why like I gave it two stars. And I think I'm done reading Kirsten Ashley unless it is very specifically wrecked to me by people I know that have the same issue as me because I just don't seem to enjoy anything of hers that isn't rock chick which is a really it's just weird like it's so weird to me but that's where I'm at now uh so yeah that was all of my reading for Smutathon. I am gonna go ahead and ask y'all to let me know if you participated and if you posted a vlog or that I'm gonna go watch it let me know uh, I chose not to vlog this round because honestly I started to and it was already gonna be so so long that I just kind of like threw it in the dumpster Sorry, not sorry, but on that note be sure to subscribe Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in a few days with a new video. Bye